suspense. Your host is Autolite, maker of a complete line of ignition engineered spark plugs, including the sensational Autolite resistor spark plugs and dependable Autolite stay full batteries. Autolite, the world's largest independent manufacturer of automotive electrical equipment, makes over 400 products for cars, trucks, planes, and boats in 28 plants from coast to coast. Among them are horns, electric windshield wipers, relays, ignition coils, and batteries. Then there's spark plug wire, battery cable, starting motors, distributors, generators, instruments and gauges, and a complete line of ignition engineered Autolite spark plugs. In addition, there are bullseye seal beam headlights, fuel pumps, bumpers, and hubcaps. So remember, from bar to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. Autolite and its 96,000 dealers everywhere present Suspense. I'm just feeling when I woke up. There's something was going to happen. Oh, Joe, you're tired. You work too hard. I'm in danger. I couldn't get it out of my mind. Funny how I imagined things in the middle of the night. I kept worrying about you and Kathy. Darling, we were in our own house in the midst of the city. All respectable people are in bed. There are some who aren't. Up there at night, shadows. Joe, you had a bad dream. That's all. Yes, you're right. Silly, isn't it? As a matter of fact, Dr. Parker. Mommy! Mommy! Kathy, why aren't you asleep? I had a bad dream. Oh. Daddy! Now, I'm right. Now, Joe. Young lady, you're going right back to your trundle bed. Mommy, tell me a story. Not now, Kathy. Darling, Mommy and Daddy are right here. Nothing's going to happen. I have two babies tonight, both with bad dreams. There now. You go back to sleep and dream about the sandman. Ellen, is she on? Sound asleep. Just as soon as she hit the pillow. I suppose you want a story too, Dr. Joseph Park. Nightmares at your age. What would your patients think? Good night, darling. Good night. Torben. I've got the jumps tonight. Let them ring. Oh, it sounds as though they mean it. Someone may need you. Well, I'm not going. All right. <laughs> Ellen, why wasn't I a plumber? You could still get calls in the middle of the night. <laughs> Just a minute. Oh, all right, Kathy. Just a moment, darling. I'm coming.
the doc? Like it says on the door? Yes, I'm the doctor. Sorry, doc. Emergency. I'm a private physician. It's 3 o'clock in the morning. The city's full of hospitals. Doc, you see what I mean? I think I do. We've got a fellow outside. He's hurt bad, doc. I'd like to have you take a look at him. Right now. All right, bring him in. No tricks, doc. Remember about that. I'm asking you nice. No tricks. Don't worry about me. I'm no hero. Check. I have a wife and child. Okay. Bring him in. Careful. Take it easy. Take it easy. Oh. Zick. Zick, he's really hurt. No names. Give her a hand, Doc. You let me have him. What's this all about? What Nothing. happened? Don't ask questions, Doc. Just take it from here. Get his jacket off while I clean up. You hear that? Help with his coat. Oh! <coughs> what are you doing? I can't get it off. Let me do that. Yeah. Oh! How many? I told you, no name. I forgot. Next time, don't forget. <clears throat> Bullet, wasn't it? What do you think? It's in bad shape. It's gone around the lung, maybe pissed. Needs an operation. Okay. So you operate? You're crazy. This is no place. He needs a hospital. Anesthesia, x-rays, if there's time. I'm not asking you, Doc. I'm telling you. Joe! Is there anything I can do? Uh, no, Ellen. Go back to bed. Well, what was it? A patient. Don't come in, Ellen. Go back upstairs. <gasps> Darling, what's wrong? I'm coming in there. It's been an accident. It's all right, Ellen. Please. Joe, I'll help you. I I'm a registered nurse. Ellen, will you do as I say? All right, Joe. Stay right where you are, lady. Joe. So, we got a nurse in the house, huh? I don't want to make it easy for you, Doc. Don't be a fool. He needs more than a nurse. He's been shot. The chances of an operation. They ought to get into a hospital. We're not leaving the premises, and you're doing the operating. Tell them, lady. I never questioned the doctor's diagnosis. He's doing it anyway. You know how, don't you, Doc? Of course I know how. All right, get started. Quit acting so big. Look, I told you I'm no hero, but I'm a doctor. And I tell you very certainly, if I try to operate here, he could die just like that. No. No, Sig. Sig, listen. Maybe we'd better take him to a hospital, huh? You're crazy? How long did we last? No, no. Couldn't we just leave him there? Shut up. Why don't you leave him here? Go ahead. Get out. As soon as you've gone, I'll call an ambulance. We're not leaving him anywhere. What difference does it make to you? He's just another hoodlum. Take it easy, Doc. He means more to me than you do or your wife here or her. So you better fix him up good. This is no common hood. He's my kid brother. Your brother? Yes, lady, and I need him. So I'm going to see that he gets a break. Anybody else, I'd have thrown right out of the car. You never gave him a break in his life. If it wasn't for you, he wouldn't be like that right now. You want some more? Go ahead, I don't care. Vince was all right till you started to work on him. We both were. Oh, Zig, why couldn't you let us be? Look at us. Like tonight. Who took the rap when the cops started shooting? Not you, you ran for the car. Vince. Vince, he was the... He got it instead of me, that's all. Instead of you, shoot him, instead of you. Oh, Vince. Are, are you and Vince? I'm his wife. He hates me. Mommy, where are you? Kathy. Kathy. Hello, Mommy. You got some paper? Darling, go upstairs. I'm not sleepy. Mommy, can I see you? Look, honey, Daddy's busy. Do as Mommy says. Hello. I'm Kathy. Who are you? Are you a friend of Daddy? Sure. Sure, kid, I'm a friend. Mommy, tell me a story, will you? Not now, Kathy. Well, you must go back upstairs to bed. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Kid, come here. Come here, I'll tell you a story. 
Cutley, I'll take care of her, Doc. You'll be busy taking care of him. You're going to operate, remember? I told you I won't do it. There isn't one chance in a hundred. You'll do it. You wouldn't want anything to happen, would you? What? Yeah, he would. Like blowing out a match, I see. He don't care for nothing. You better take your chances, Doc. Get at it. If you care anything for this kid, you better fix him up good. If I can't perform miracles. Well, you better. In this case, you just better perform a miracle. Right, Ellen. I'll need help. Please. Easy, Take it easy. Well, it's down around the lung. Maybe pierced. Straight emergency. X-rays, Joe? We have no time. Anesthesia? Equal. It's all we've got. Keep giving it to him while I'm working. Enough to hold him under. Strap him? We'll have to. Huh? Dora, you promised. Oh, sure. Once upon a time, there were two or three bears. Not two, uh, just three. Mama, Papa, and Little Bear. Okay, okay, three bears. Ziggy. Uh, Ziggy, if anything happens to Vince... Quiet. Three bears. The Mama Bear, Papa Bear, and the Little Bear. Is there any hope? I said one chance in a hundred. Now, Ellen, eat it. Please, God. A moment we'll see the second act of tonight's suspense story i'm no hero starring hume cronin but right now during this brief intermission I... hey what's that what's going on here anyway why it sounds like another chaser why yes indeed there's danny the dip and it looks like he's leaving with the loot yep there's his getaway car he jumps in hits the starter and he's off in a flash ah but he won't get far because there's clancy the cop right behind him ready to go in fast pursuit uh-oh seems that clancy's not going anywhere because his battery's gone dry and it's completely dead. <laughs> well, friends, it looks like Clancy the Cop has learned the hard way that one of the major reasons for battery failure is extreme loss of water. Yep, and that can cause a dry, dead battery just like the one he has there. Now, what he should have had, of course, is the world-famous Autolite Staple battery. This, you know, is the battery that needs water only three times a year in normal car use. Now, let me show you why. You see, in the ordinary battery, small particles keep flaking off the positive plates. So the ordinary battery has to have a large space in the bottom of the case to hold those particles. Otherwise, they'll get together and short circuit the cells, just like you see them doing right there. But there's a big difference in the new Autolite Stavo battery. In the Stavo battery, every positive plate has a fiberglass retaining mat protecting it, holding the active materials in place. You see, there's the fiberglass the feature that gives a real advantage to the Autolite Stay Full battery. Now, whereas the ordinary battery requires this much extra space below the plates, the Autolite Stay Full doesn't need all that extra space. So we can take the extra space and use it to advantage by putting it up above. Now, if we put electrolyte in both batteries, you see there's space left up above for extra water. But you also see an ordinary battery holds only this much extra water right there, while well, the Autolite Stay Full battery holds over three times as much water. Right there. That gives you over three times the liquid reserve of ordinary batteries. And that's why you have to add water to your Autolite Stay Full battery only three times a year in normal car use. Say, here's another fact that you should know about. In tests conducted according to the life cycle standards of the Society of Automotive Engineers, the Autolite Stay Full battery was found to give 70% longer average life and batteries without the stay full features. Yep, it's a fact. So why don't you take my advice and enjoy the extra assurance of having an Autolite stay full battery, the battery that needs water only three times a year in normal car use. Well, sir, we rushed a new Autolite stay full over to Clancy's car, and this time he was really off in fast pursuit. As in jig time, he caught up to the runaway robber, and Danny the Dip was in a real dilemma. 
Yes, sir, Danny learned a lesson he'll never forget. You're always right with Auto Light. And now, the second act of our suspense story, I'm No Hero, starring Hume Cronin. is entirely competent. You're the doc. Take a look at him. I have looked at him 50 times. Doesn't it mean as much to me as it does to you? No, doc, it don't. Next to him in there, your kid don't mean anything. Not a thing. What do you think of that? All we can do is wait. Don't answer it. Maybe a patient. I said don't answer it. Please, can I no, take lady. Her to no, lady. But she She's my insurance. You get the idea? Zig, Zig, let her have the kid. Who asked you? Oh, the doctor is. What? You got your gun? What are you afraid of? I'm just not taking any chances, that's all. Besides, I... I'm kind of enjoying this. Enjoying it? Yeah. I got the drop on you, Doc, all the way around. I, I kind of enjoy having the drop on people. You didn't you always have the drop, as you call it, did you? What do you mean? It's pretty plain, isn't it? Just look at yourself in the mirror. So oh, I'm a runt. So sure, I used to get pushed around by everybody when I was a kid. I wasn't like Vincent there. He was a big guy. A big guy and all muscle. But I got brains, Doc. That's how me and Vince worked it out together. His muscle, my brains. Vince never wanted any part of this. You broke him down. Think you're rotten. Oh, I'll listen to the chippy. I'll handle you later. Nobody pushes me around now, Doc. Not you, cops, dames, nobody. Not as long as I got this and him in there. Quit walking around. You give me the jitters. Sit down. How much longer do we have to wait? We got to get out of here. How long, Doc? I can't tell you. We'll take him now. Drive the car easy. Zig. Zig, let's do like the Doc says, huh? How do I know he isn't trying to pull something? You aren't trying to pull something, are you, Doc? Come on. We're gone. What's wrong with that head of yours? You'll kill him if you move him now. He'll have a hemorrhage within two blocks. What do you mean, hemorrhage? He'll bleed to death. Oh. You didn't do it right, huh? Yes, I did it right, but you don't patch up a man the way you do a tire. There are rules to follow. Surgical rules. Like what? First, the excision of all tissue along uh, the wound track. Legation of arteries to control hemorrhage, the proper use of sulfur drug to prevent sepsis, the immobilization of the patient, rest, treatment for shock, watching every minute for a sudden loss of blood. Suppose he needed a transfusion. Anything he needs, you'll see he gets. You wouldn't be trying to frighten me, would you, Doc? I'm just giving you the hard facts. What you'll do with them is up to you. You know something, Doc? I don't like you. Oh, Joe! Shake some of the wind out of me. Talks too much. Go on, go on. Go in there, get him ready. Go on. All right, old. Better have another look. Are you all right, Joe? What do you think? Pulse and respiration a little stronger. He shouldn't be moved. Joe, what you said upstairs before. About people in the shadow. I know. It's a psychopathic case, Ellen. Dangerous and unpredictable. Isn't there anything we can do? wait and see. Joe! <laughs> what are you whispering about? You remember what I told you about tricks, Doc? 
not even a little one. Lights. Who's Grady? Policeman on the block. You better go and answer him. Call. Tell him you'll be right there. In a moment, Grady. Babe, you watch the kid. You sit down and don't try anything crazy. I'll be right with you every minute, Doc. So just watch every move you make. Hi, Doc. Just that I saw the lights in the car outside, I was wondering if yes, I could... Yes, thanks, sit. Grady. It's a patient. It's all right. Fine time of the night. I guess it's no cinch being a doc. You get a lot of false alarms. Well, this you? one was no false alarm. It's getting late, doc. This is Mr. Uh, a friend of the patient. How are you? Uh, was the bullet, was it, doc? Bullet? Why? Well, there was a holdup in a hotel downtown. They killed a night watchman. But one of them got winged on a getaway. Who uh, did it? Two men and a woman. He went in as guest, in evening clothes. What'd you say your name was, mister? I didn't, but my name's Henry, Henry Campbell. Live in the neighborhood? No, I live further up. That's your car outside, huh? Yeah, yeah, that's my car. Mind if I see your patient, Doc? Uh, not now, Grady, he's in pretty bad shape. Something on your mind, officer? No, nothing. Well, I guess I'll be going, Doc. What's your hurry? Just where are you going? Back on my beat. Where else? Oh. See what I mean, Doc? Nobody pushes me around. Kill them. It was him or me, wasn't it? Where do you think he'd have gone? If I let him out of here, right to the nearest police box, you pick up his gun. We better get out of here, those shots. Not without Vince. How is he? Stay! Now we. We stay then. Babe, lock the door. I could do with some coffee. Where's your kitchen? In back. All right, let's go. Go on. Come on, kid. No, leave her. Not a chance. Come on. Come on with me. Wait. Don't. You hurt Kathy. Joe, I don't like the way Vince looks. I couldn't take it. I knew it couldn't. Joe Cassidy! Vince! Vince! You let him die. No, no, we didn't. Well, what are we going to tell Sig? Oh, he'll go crazy. He didn't like me, huh? I was his wife, yeah, but... Sick owned him. Where do you keep your coffee in this place? Huh? Where's the coffee? It, it's right in the second shelf. Come with me and I'll show... What's going on here? How's Vince? He's all right. I've been watching. How all right? <laughs> You're all right, huh, honey? Yeah. It's Zig, honey. He wants to know. What? I can't hear you, Vince. You have to talk louder, honey. Oh, sure, honey, we'll be leaving soon. Go to sleep, then. That's it, honey, go to sleep. Joe! Let me talk to him. No, let him alone, he's better. Vince. What did they do to you? He's dead. 
dead, huh? I warned you from the first. Get that kid. No. Do what I tell you. No. no. Bring her here. What good will this do you? We're getting out of here, taking her with us. That'll keep your mouth shut and give us time. We need an hour. What will you do with it? Maybe we'll phone and let you know. How could we trust you? You can't. That's the nice part about it, Doc. You'll just have to sit here, keep your hands off the phone, and wait. Sit, what about me? He's no good to anybody now. We're saving our own skin. Watch it, Doc. Keep her quiet. I can't. I don't know how. No. You're not good for anything, are you? Just like I told Vince when he married you. Give her to me. I'll shut her up. Get out of here. I'm not touching you. Oh, see. This is Rex Marshall speaking for Autolite, and in just a moment I'll not only tell you the title of our suspense drama next week, but I'll have the pleasure of introducing to you in person the brilliant young screen actor who will be its star. But first, I'd like to remind you that right now is a good time to treat your car or truck to a real number one motor tune-up at your nearby service station, garage, car dealer, or repair shop. You know, friends, an ounce of prevention now will keep your car running right and may save you troublesome delays plus the possibility of expensive repairs later on. So ask your repairman to test and service the electrical system of your car, including the distributor, coil, generator and regulator, starting motor, battery, spark plugs, and wiring. And if your Autolite equipped car needs replacement parts, ask for and insist on Autolite original factory parts exactly like those that were installed by the manufacturer. You know, all Autolite parts are engineered to fit together perfectly, work together perfectly, because they're a perfect team. So don't accept electrical parts supposed to be as good. Ask for and insist on Autolite original factory parts. And remember, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. Next week, our drama will be that famous spine-tingling story of suspense, Wisteria Cottage. And here now in person is our star, Conrad Janis. What would you do if the family you'd attached yourself to, the, the security you'd counted on, were suddenly taken away from you? Would you kill? Join us next week for Suspense on television. And also be sure to suspense each Thursday night on your radio. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.